So the action begs this question. Have high-flying stocks gotten overbought? And how about the broader market as well? Could, ne could next uh, week's Fed meeting throw the balls off of their game? Or is it all just a storm in a teacup? Let's get right to the floor show. Great people joining us today, as always. But joining me now is Sarge986 President Stephen Guilfoyle. Great to see you, Sarge. And Carnivore Trading CEO Dutch Masters. Gentlemen, thank you both for being here. Uh, Sarge, let me begin with you. I, I, look, I was making notes. To me, What's going to bring a bull run to an end? Well, the earnings are growing pretty well. Of course, there are exceptions, but overall pretty good. The economy seems to be doing fine. Yes, inflation is a little hot, but aren't the valuations where they should be? What say you? Well, I, I kind of disagree with you on the economy. I, I know on the surface it looks like mm. the economy is fine. But we do have a rebound in yeah. inflation that's been going on for several months now. We do have GDP and GDI that don't match up like they're supposed to. So growth is potentially a lot lower than people think. Uh, Non-farm payrolls mm. are a mirage. If you look at the other survey, the household survey, uh, employment's been in contraction for four out of five months. And there's average only 50,000 new jobs for a whole 12 months. So there's a lot of there are quite a few things to worry about here, I think, in the economy. The Fed is probably going to have to make a decision on whether to fight inflation or support a stalled economy, one or the other. They're both going in the wrong direction right now, in my opinion. My guess, it, well, what I think they should do is not, not uh, cut rates whatsoever, but my guess is that eventually they'll get pulled into the political thing of it all, and they probably will have to in, in order to address the federal, the, the federal government's ability to service their own debt, they're probably going to have to drive rates right. lower and pretend that the ensuing inflation, the devaluation of the dollar, was an accident. All right, Sarge, I feel like I've been slapped down for my optimism. <laughs> Let's bring in Dutch. Dutch, what about you? I mean, look, it's, yes, maybe the momentum's slowing a little bit, but there's still a lot of cash out there, certainly on the uh, sidelines, and it's coming into the market. What, what spoils this, in your opinion? Well, I think actually that uh, Sarge said that the mirage uh, that he mentioned, uh, I like to tell you about another mirage that we see, which is the indexes themselves. The indexes are not a true uh, read on what's actually happening in the market. I mean, the last 10 days or so, we have had some real repricing going on underneath the, you know, Magnificent Seven and some of the others that are holding up these mm -hmm. indexes. So, uh, you know, we, we, we see that we would like to have the Fed just stay where they're at. I think the market could go sideways to maybe up a little bit if uh, they leave that alone because the market is anticipating and rising and, and, and staying where it's at on the anticipation that they're going to lower rates uh, at some point. In January 1st, when we were on the show, like in mid-January, we said that they weren't going to get mm. the rating uh, reduction in March. We still stand by that. The market is now coming to terms with the fact that we may not get a rate reduction, uh, maybe just one this year, maybe none, unless the political pressure, you know, gets to be too much where they have to do it. Yeah, exactly. So, Sarge, with that in mind, what areas are you looking at? Uh, what do you like in this environment? Okay, well, it, it's hard to like really like anything. What I'm doing, is, yeah. well, I'm trading, first off, trading more than <laughs> investing, but I'm maintaining core long positions in, in really yeah. what got me here. I'm sticking with the AI infrastructure semiconductors like AMD and NVIDIA, sticking with the cybersecurity names, sticking with big data like Palantir, Salesforce, for ServiceNow, Microsoft, and sticking with the white loss wonder drug, Lilly. These are the stocks that have carried me over for like for probably more than a year now. And while I trade them, I never flat them. I have stayed long all of those names. Very good. Uh, Dutch, to you, I noticed that you're kind of liking some gold and oil. You like the oil patch? Uh, explain. Well, <clears throat> we're seeing oil spike over 80 here now. So we like rig, which is mm -hmm. down low, which we think can give us a really nice trade. In technology, by the way, I love the name Sarge was laying out there, and I love that those are core positions. Uh, Oracle has gone through a big change uh, where, where mm -hmm. they're you know, a major change in their business where their AI and cloud revenue for the first time in history 
is exceeding its software licensing revenue. So we were buyers of that on that news. And it looks like Oracle is going to get very aggressive uh, in that space. Uh, we started to notice that the industrial stocks were percolating and vibrating at kind of a higher level than they have in a long time. They're not exciting, but stocks like Ball and uh, PNR, which is uh, Pentair, and uh, Blackline, BL, which is in the space. And then, of course, we do use, we, you know, they are going to drop rates at some point, and gold should rally and be okay with that. We could have a decent rally in gold. Right. So we like GLD and the ETFs there and uh, NUGT for the shorter term trades. Always fascinating stuff with you guys. Stephen Guilfoyle, Dutch Masters. Uh, I think I'm coming away from this a little less optimistic, but I hear what you're saying. <laughs> and thank you both, gentlemen, for joining us.